Hi people, welcome to the Run Testers and our full review of the new Coros Pace 3. Now the Pace 2 was bang for buck, one of the best GPS running watches going, so we were pretty excited to test its successor. This one packs a bigger battery life, it now has all systems dual frequency GPS, it has some new sport modes including trail running, a pulse ox sensor and some improved navigation smarts. It's also a little bit pricier than its predecessor. So is it still a bargain budget running watch? Well, we've given it the multi-tester treatment and we're about to give you our verdict. Watch on to find out what we liked, what we didn't, and whether or not we would spend our money on the new Coros Pace 3. Let's dive into what's new then. And the top line upgrades from the Pace 2 include a bigger battery life, as we mentioned. Coros's trademark is long battery life and with the Pace 3, They've also improved things again. On paper, in standard GPS mode, you're gonna get 38 hours of runtime. With all systems satellite on, you get 25 hours, and in dual frequency, that drops to 15 hours. The daily use battery life is billed at 24 days. That's four days longer than the Pace 2. Now, another significant upgrade is having all systems dual frequency GPS that aims to bring better tracking accuracy to your runs. There's also a new trail running mode, though that'll also come to the Pace 2 in time. As I mentioned, there's a pulse oximeter sensor for keeping tabs on your blood oxygen levels. You also now get music storage and playback with four gigabits of space. Now in terms of design, the Chorus Pace 3 has a 1.2 inch transflective 240 by 240 memory and pixels always on display. That's the same size and resolution as the Pace 2, but Chorus says it's a higher quality and it now packs a touchscreen to boot. The scratch resistant glass display sits in a lightweight fiber reinforced polymer bezel and casing that's pretty similar if not identical to the Pace 2. The Pace 3 now weighs 30 grams with a nylon strap. That's actually a whopping one gram heavier than the Pace 2. So no real difference here to what is already an impressively lightweight watch. When it comes to sensors, there's a smaller optical heart rate, which has a slightly less bulge on it, which Coro says will give a better fit and improved comfort. You're also getting that SpO2 sensor and a barometric altimeter in there too. When it comes to tracking features, the big news is the addition of some new sport modes. Nothing major here, but you're gonna get trail running, ski, snowboard, and cross country ski. But as I said, those will come to the Pace 2 by 2024. Otherwise, there's the same suite of Evo Lab training, recovery, and fitness insights. It's nicely comprehensive, plus the usual sleep and activity tracking to boot. Navigation smarts now include in-app route planning, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, breadcrumb navigation, back to start, elevation profile, distance to destination, and also checkpoint GPS coordinate and storm alert. There's not much here by way of smartwatch smarts, you get notifications and music, a bit of watch face customization, but there's no contactless payments and no Spotify streaming. There's also Bluetooth 5.0 in here and four gig memory. And of course it's water resistant to 50 meters. Now there is some not so good news on price. The Chorus Pace 3 will now cost $229 in the US, 219 pounds in the UK, 50 bucks and 20 pounds pricier than the Pace 2 at launch but still considerably cheaper than the Garmin 4 and a 265, which arguably is probably its closest rival when it comes to its overall capabilities now. Okay, so three things I've liked about the Chorus Pace 3. Now, I think the first thing for me, and it's something that Chorus hasn't really spoken about in terms of announcing the Pace 3, is I feel like the watch software runs a little bit smoother. Now, I don't think it was a massive issue on the Pace 2, but it definitely felt a little bit laggy in comparison to some other watches. Now, I feel like it's definitely improved on that front on the Pace 3, and I think, you know, it might not be a radical kind of big thing in terms of, you know, using this watch, but day-to-day -day interactions, it's definitely felt a little bit nicer. And I think about things like, you know, I've used Polar watches recently, which have promised massive kind of performance improvements in terms of that software, and it's still been a bit laggy and sluggish from places. So I've definitely found there's been an improvement on that front, which has just made you using the Pace 3 a little bit nicer to use overall. The other thing I talk about here is heart rate monitoring performance. Now, in terms of the accuracy that I've seen on the Chorus Pace 3, it's probably been one of the better kind of heart rate monitoring performances I've seen on a running watch or tested on a running watch and sports watch in general. Now, I would still wear a heart rate monitor chest strap. You can still pair one to this watch, but I found in my kind of track sessions, my kind of high intensity kind of interval sessions that I've done with this watch, it's really held up well with a heart rate monitor chest strap. So I think if you were looking at pretty reliable kind of wrist-based heart rate monitoring, I've found that the um, Chorus Pace 3 has delivered very good data in general for most of my runs. The other thing I talk about is obviously the touchscreen has been added. Now, not everyone needs a touchscreen and I get that and, you know, buttons do a very good job. But I think in terms of when you're starting to implement more smartwatch 
kind of features, then you've almost, it's nice to have that touchscreen functionality there. Now, what I've liked the fact is, you know, you've got this music player on here now on the Pay 3, and it kind of needs the touchscreen functionality. Now, it's not the best in class, touchscreen um, kind of support, I would say, when you look at things like what you're getting from Garmin, I think probably even Polar as well. But I think in terms of having it there for features like the music, fe you know, the controls um, and playback, I think it works really nicely and it, it just makes it a nicer feature to have and almost needed to have that touchscreen functionality. So yeah, for me, all around with the kind of performance that we're getting from the Pace 2, it's all here. Those are three things that really stood out for me in my time with the Chorus Pace 3. So my likes start with the accuracy of the Chorus Pace 3. This is not only an improvement on the Chorus Pace 2, but actually what we've seen from Chorus in general, especially on GPS. Uh, so the Pace 3 has dual band GPS, but this doesn't always mean you're going to get great accuracy. Like with some brands, it does, like uh, Garmin's dual band watches and the Suunto Vertical in particular are very accurate. But in the past, Corus's dual band GPS watches just haven't been very good, I think, on accuracy. The uh, Corus Apex 2 Pro and the Corus Vertex 2, they didn't really outperform normal GPS watches, I don't think. However, something has gone right with the pastry. They don't know what changes have been made under the hood, but it's been really accurate for me. I've been testing it against the Garmin Epix Pro throughout my review period. I've done a race in it, and throughout all that testing, the GPS accuracy has been really, really good. In the race, for example, it came up with a distance bang on for a half marathon and matched up the trace of the uh, Garmin Epix Pro almost exactly. Done a lot of running in my local woods under tree cover, and it's been really very good throughout. So overall, maybe it falls very slightly short still of the standard that you're going to get from the Garmin Epix Pro and Garmin's dual band watches and the Suunto Vertical, but nothing that you've really noticed in isolation. It's only because I've been comparing these so much. So I do think you can now rely on the Pace 3 as a very accurate watch that lives up to its dual band name, whereas I didn't think you could do that with Corus's watches in the past. Also say the heart rate accuracy has been exceptional for me as well. Like it hasn't really put a foot wrong in all the testing I've done. I've been checking after pretty much every run against what the, um, I, the reading I got on the Epix Pro from a Polar H10 chest strap was. And I've done lots of tricky little sessions. I've done hill reps. I've done a uh, mile repeat session where one of the miles was 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off. So lots of ups and downs in heart rate. And the uh, Pace 3 hasn't really missed any of it. It's matched up pretty much beat for beat. Have been testing it in very warm conditions here in the UK, which usually helps with optical heart rate testing. So something to look out for in the future. But overall accuracy, I cannot fault it uh, either at this price or in general. Like there's certainly nothing else at this price though that has this level of GPS accuracy, I'd say, because you're not really getting great dual band watches around that price. So yeah, thumbs up for accuracy for sure. I also say that I'm a big fan of the design of the watch. Yes, it's plastic and it may not feel as premium as watches with metal bezels and all that, but I really like it. I feel it charmingly dinky. It's so small and light and it sits on the wrist really nicely. You completely forget it's there. It's very comfortable to sleep in, even in really hot conditions. And it doesn't actually feel cheap to me at all, despite the fact it, it is fairly good value and obviously all made of plastic. It just feels like a really nicely designed watch. Uh, so I really like design. That's obviously something that will probably divide opinion a bit more rather than liking accuracy, but I think it is a really well put together watch. I do prefer the darker coloured one, and I will say if you get the white one, the white band does start to show a little bit of grubbiness over time, uh, although you can probably scrub it out a bit better than I have. Yeah, and overall, the other overarching like I'd have is just the value here is unquestionable. Like this watch really nails the basics, which you also saw from the Coros Pace 2, but it then goes beyond that in adding useful extras, things like the dual band GPS, which is more accurate. You've got the music storage, which I'll come on to, which isn't amazing, but it, it is there. You've got navigation and you've got pretty decent training analysis from Coros and good battery life. So I turn the watch uh, heart rate readings on to be continuous because when it, as a default, it will take readings every 10 minutes outside of activities. It, you know, it still takes them real time during activities, but to save a bit of battery, you only get readings every 10 minutes outside them. I turn continuous tracking on just to compare the battery life to other watches because most other watches will take readings every second as standard. And the Pace 3 will still last me six days or so on a charge with running most days with the heart rate monitoring at all times and notifications coming in. So that's really strong battery life for a watch that is so small and just feeds into the fact that the all-round package here is really good value. Onto my likes then. The first thing really is design. Not a great deal has changed here from the Pace 2. It's still perhaps a bit plastic, but that's what keeps it nice and light. And overall, I'm a fan of the design. It's functional, not fancy. It's not trying to be showy and it's not trying to pretend it's anything other than quite a kind of simple, basic running watch. I really like the fact it's unfussy, it's pretty subtle, and I think it's highly effective. You know, you've got a light and compact watch here. The nylon strap perhaps isn't as soft as some, but overall it's comfortable and easy to wear 24 seven. You can forget it's there, wear it while you're sleeping. The screen is pretty small, but this is a compact watch, and it's no match obviously for the brightest and sharpest displays either, but it's perfectly legible, I think, in most light, and it does the job nicely for what I need. Competent here in terms of design is the word that I'd use. Second for me is a longer battery life. I love a watch with a good long battery life. And the Chorus Pace 3 touts some impressive runtime numbers. 
And in my tests, I found it pretty much lived up to them as well, which is great. The overnight burn averaged around 3%, so you're not losing crazy amounts overnight. And overall, I got around nine days use on a single charge with 15 and a half hours GPS training. That was with a mix of standard and dual frequency GPS runs thrown in. Now that included burning 8% from a two and a half hour run in standard GPS, oddly 7% from four and a half hours in all systems GPS, but while one hour in dual frequency burned around 4%, one day's usage with no training burned around 6%. That's a bit short of the days it says it will have, but it's still pretty good. Next up for me, I really like the dual frequency GPS accuracy. For me in G standard mode, it was a bit hit and miss, had a tendency to read long. And when you look at the tracks, it had a habit of meandering slightly on the routes that I took. It's nothing too crazy, but the little bits do add up in that standard GPS mode. Now, the pace three could often be like a quarter of a mile ahead of other watches when I use that. However, when you flicked over to the dual frequency mode, which is a surprise to get it at this kind of price point, I often found it matched the much pricier Garmin Enduro 2 and the Coros Vertex 2 for that dual frequency tracking. Its performance was right up there. Now, yes, you'll sacrifice some battery life to use that more accurate setting, but in my tests, it did mean noticeably better accuracy, and I'd say it's worth it for those runs where you're running kind of up to the marathon distance where accuracy probably matters the most. Now, another thing's perhaps a little bit surprising that I liked was the pessimistic recovery score. The Pace 3 recovery score seemed much more on point when I tested it versus the Garmin 2 Enduro readings, the Ultra Human Air Ring, and my trusted source, the HRV for Training app. The Pace 3 trends followed the HRV for Training app and my own real world feelings much more closely than the Air Ring or the Enduro 2, both of which often had me ready to go again after really quite hard efforts and races far sooner than I personally felt I was. The Coros Pace 3 and the HRV for training app recommend a little bit more caution, which I think matched really how I felt and was more on point than those. So yeah, I think in terms of the recovery scores, I was quite impressed with that. I don't have loads of dislikes with the Coros Pace 3. Uh, the first one is the music storage on it. Like this is still pretty underdeveloped area uh, for Coros. Like it just offers drag and drop storage of MP3 files. It's not even a variety of file types here. Now you can get MP3 files. It's not the easiest thing to do. Like I, when I was trying to get one of my podcasts onto the watch, I had to try and find a source that had it in MP3 or convert it myself. And I did also manage to dig out some old music from when I used to have all my MP3 files instead of just using streaming services. You can put them on the watch. This isn't the most easy process either. The first two times I tried to plug the pastry into my computer, it didn't recognize it. I had to reset the Coros for my computer to pick it up. And the dragging across one album took a long time as well. So this is quite a slow process, but you can get music on there. So I'd say it's not a feature that I'd be tempted to use every day. It'd be quite annoying to keep having to interacting with it. But if you want to put on one very good running playlist, or if you want to set the watch up just for one race, when you don't want to carry your phone, you can do that and then connect it up headphones easily enough to the watch and you can listen to the music on it you know, perfectly well. It's just a bit of an arduous process compared to most other watches that use music that link up to streaming services. So like all of Garmin's watches, you can link to Spotify accounts and things like that. So it's not the most uh, uh, easy feature to use, but it is a feature on the watch. So that's a good thing. I suppose the other dislike is that the price has gone up a little bit. Now, I don't think this is an unfair rise or even a particularly notable one, given how much the price of things has risen since the Coros Pace 2 came out. But it does open up a bit of room underneath the Pace 3 for cheaper watches to come in and nail the basics, including the Pace 2 itself. So that's not something you love to see, a price rise in anything. But I think overall it is probably a fairly fair one. But as well as opening up the room for even cheaper watches beneath the Pace 3, it does also bring it closer to some of Garmin's watches that will be quite good competitors to it. So if the price has stayed the same, then obviously this has been even more of a bargain, but you have got that little price rise to consider. So three things I didn't absolutely love about the Coros Pace 3. I think the first thing for me, and it's pretty much been a long-standing thing with Coros, is that this kind of move into making their watches feel a bit more like smart watches, but it's not really executed it well so far. I think if you look at things like notification support, um, obviously having that kind of music player there, but you don't have that kind of streaming service support um, to kind of back it up. Uh, really, I think ultimately, it, you know, if you want the best smart watch experience on a sports watch, on a running watch, Garmin's going to better serve you. I think Polar's getting a little bit better, but I still think a little bit like Cross, it's, it's a work in progress. So I say in general, the smartwatch experience and using it, it's not fantastic, but it's been like that for a while. And I think that's something that Coros is going to have to work on. I think what also lends itself to that problem in terms of the smartwatch support is that I think maybe it needs a nicer screen. It would have been nicer to have a, maybe, a, you know, not necessarily a bigger screen, but maybe a higher resolution screen. I mean, visibility has been absolutely fine, but I would like something maybe that's 
a little bit crisper and maybe just a little bit nicer to look at because you've got this kind of you know while it's plastic i think the case is nice to look at you're getting these nice kind of straps as well so i think maybe seeing an improvement on the screen resolution front might have been a nice addition i think here and in terms of that kind of course sports tracking experience not really a criticism but not a massive amount has happened that's been different i think you've got that kind of dual band um gps support which i think is great to have here um and i think that was naturally that was going to be added and it's good to see it at chorus's cheapest uh, kind of price point i think outside of that it's all much of the same in terms of what we got from the pace two but as i said that's not a massive kind of criticism it's just maybe i was hoping for a little bit more also you know you're getting a lot of these features like breadcrumb navigation uh, kind of rolling back to the pace too as well so yeah not a massive issue but i was maybe hoping for a little bit more on that front we're not quite seeing that but it's good that it's kind of managed to you know maintain the good performance we've got from the pace two in terms of that sports tracking so there's not a great deal i don't like about this watch yes the screen could be sharper yes it could have more features but everything else is pretty good Apart from heart rate, I have had a somewhat different experience to the optical heart rate to Nick and Mike, and in my test I found the Pace 3's optical sensor often struggled. It regularly struggled for the first 10 minutes of my runs with a lot of high spikes. It was also prone to high spikes throughout the runs as well, and that's at all kinds of different runs from steady to intervals. Added to that, it often failed to pick up drops in heart rate when I stopped. So I was having not the great experience that those two guys had. I compared it a lot to other optical sensors, a Polar Verity Sense, a chest strap, Chorus's own heart rate monitor, and overall, in all of those tests, I found it a bit hit and miss. That said, I wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't stop me buying the watch, as I'd always kind of recommend using a heart rate monitor anyway. And for the price you're paying here, you can, you've got enough money to invest or enough headroom here to invest in a good chest strap and the Pace Three and still have change over some of its rivals. So, yeah, it wasn't great for me, but it wouldn't stop me buying it. So my verdict on the uh, Chorus Pace 3, this is an, an excellent running watch that doesn't just repeat the trick of the Chorus Pace 2 in being a very good value watch that nails all the essentials at a good price. Uh, this does that and then goes beyond it because it does bring in some extra features that you don't usually see at this price point. The accurate multiband GPS tracking, I think being the most important of them for me, but then you do also get the music storage and some extras like breadcrumb navigation and then pretty decent training analysis from Chorus's Evo Lab. Big tick for me is certainly that Chorus has improved the accuracy of the watch and particularly the GPS accuracy. Someone like myself who is obsessive about GPS accuracy, it's just a big weight off my mind to know that oh, I can get this watch that does all the essentials and one of the essentials for me is very accurate GPS tracking and you are now getting it from the pastry whereas I don't think you got it from Chorus's GPS uh, in the past. The design of it won't appeal to everyone but although it is plastic and small and doesn't use like metal bezels and all that I still think it's nice. I really like having it on my wrist and it doesn't feel cheap to me so I'd say all round fantastic watch. The competition is out there though. It's not completely without competition, even at its price point. Like you can go cheaper and pick up the Pace 2, an excellent watch from Chorus. Or actually uh, the Cathlon's watch is built on Chorus's platform. Things like the Kiprun 900 in particular, which if you want that metal bezel and a slightly nicer looking watch that exists and it's cheaper than the Chorus Pace 3. It doesn't have the dual band GPS, but in general, you're getting a pretty good all round package there that does everything you want from a running watch in a slightly nice design. And then even cheaper still is the Kipran uh, GPS 500, which is built on the uh, original Coros Pace model. So you're going back a bit there, but it still does do the essentials. Like again, you're not gonna get as accurate GPS and heart rate as on the Pace 3, and you're not gonna get some of the newer features like dual band uh, tracking and music storage, but there are cheaper options there if you just wanna watch that really does the basics well. And then probably the bigger competition will come from Garmin as it always does in the watch sphere. Now, I, I would say the Pace 3 quite easily overwhelms what you get from things like the Forerunner 45, 55, even the 245, because it's got the more accurate GPS, it's got the battery life. And then you've got probably more extensive training analysis than you get from those watches as well. It's the Forerunner 255, I think, that will be probably the sternest competition. That was a watch that has multi-band GPS. It has music storage and links up to streaming services. It has a slightly nicer design, in my opinion. And also, obviously, puts you into the Garmin ecosystem, where a lot of people already are. And or and it is, in general, a very good ecosystem. Although I think the Chorus one isn't really far behind. It's something you get used to. But a lot of people are very comfortable with how Garmin sets everything up. And the Forerunner 255 obviously brings that into play. It's a little bit more expensive than the Coros Pace 3, but in sales, the gap does come a bit closer because the 255 is an older watch now. So 
yeah, that is a harder one to call. Uh, I think I'd probably go for the Pace 3 myself, just make the saving. There's nothing that I find absolutely necessary to get on the 255 that you don't get on the uh, Pace 3. The music storage of Spotify would obviously be a very big thing for some people. And the ease of use there you have with the 255, but I think you will get used to the Coros Pace 3. I certainly have and find it very easy to use day to day. So overall, I'd say this is a great watch. And probably I'd say looking at the Michael Lodge, uh, the watch I would buy if I was buying a watch from scratch now, like if I didn't get my head turned by AMOLED watches, I do love AMOLED watches. So if I wasn't, if I was maybe I might end up with something like the Apple Watch or the 400 265 or 965. I really was splashing out because I do love those displays on the watches. But if I was just looking purely value for money and to get a very good running watch that would cater to everything I could need training for marathons, even ultra marathons I've been training for recently, uh, I think I would get the Pace 3 because the all round package is so good. For me, the key new feature on it being that the GPS finally seems to be accurate and live up to its multi-band name, which we didn't get from Chorus in the past. So yeah, fantastic all-round watch. There are some cheaper watches that are very good, but they're not as good. And then you can look at some Garmin watches. There are some Garmin watches obviously up the range that are considerably better than the Pace 3. Things like the 400 965, but you're talking hundreds of pounds more. And at its price, it's really impossible to beat the Pace 3, in my opinion. Verdict for me then, well, this is evolution, not revolution, with just a few tweaks here and there. But Coros has added things that we love to see, like longer battery life, better GPS accuracy, and some navigation smarts, and obviously that SPO sensor as well, though I don't tend to use that that much. Now they haven't really meddled with a pretty solid design. It's still light, compact, and I think for the price it's well built. Yes, it's a bit plastic, but there's a nice simplicity to it in this kind of watch at this price point. Even though it wasn't entirely infallible, the GPS holds its own compared to much pricier watches. That's a really big improvement, and it's better than many of its rivals, again, at this price. That bigger battery life pretty much lived up to billing, and long run times remain a real strength for Coros, I think. You're getting a good run time here from a nice compact watch. On the downside, the optical heart rate wasn't great for me, and I think you'll need a chest strap to get the most out of all of the HR insights and those things that pop up in the Evo labs. But overall, I think the Pace 3 builds on the bang for buck strength of the Pace 2, and I definitely recommend this highly for new runners, for those on a budget, or people looking for an unfussy watch that ticks the basic box and goes a little bit further to boot. So my verdict on the Chorus Pace 3 is that this is still Chorus's best watch in its collection. I think in terms of what you're getting for your money, I think in terms of performance, and now it's got those added features like the touchscreen functionality, the dual frequency GPS, I think a really good heart rate monitoring performance as well from that kind of upgraded sensor. Um, and generally it's just a nice watch to live with uh, and track your runs. Now, in terms of it being a massive upgrade from the Pace 2. It depends what you really value. If you you know really struggle with the kind of GPS performance, if you like the idea of having a bit more smartwatch functionality as well in terms of that music player and the touchscreen support, then those might be reasons to upgrade. It is a little bit more expensive, but I think you know it's still at a good price point. It's still below kind of mid-range, you know, it's in that mid-range space now more, but it's still less than the Garmin Front of 255, the 265, I think things like Polar's kind of running watches in that kind of category as well. I think it's got more features than the Garmin 4 and a 55 as well. So it kind of sits at a very good price point despite kind of jumping up over that kind of $200, 200 pound price point. So for me, I think from an upgrade point of view, unless you care about kind of improvement GPS performance, I think, you know, heart rate monitoring, if you care about wrist-based heart rate monitoring and things like the touchscreen support and the music features, then those would be reasons to upgrade. I think ultimately the core experience of the Pace 2 is still very good. And if that's really what you care about or really focused on, then that's still a watch worth getting and picking up. And it also will still get supported with features like the breadcrumb navigation. As I said, I think in terms of that price point, there's not many other watches that sit at this price point where it can deliver what the Chorus Pace 3 delivers. So if you're looking at it in the grand scheme of things in terms of the other watches that, you know, from other brands, then I think in terms of where it sits at price, not many watches that can match it. So if you're looking for a very reliable, comfortable, kind of lightweight watch that offers you know, strong sports tracking, run tracking features, and crucially delivers and kind of performance, like battery life as well, then I think this is definitely a watch to look at. If you just are really more concerned about the kind of core tracking experience, then I think the Pace 2 will still serve you very well. That will definitely you know, more like more than likely go down in price as well. And that's still a good buy because everything you're getting there is still very good. And as I said, Chorus updates it and continues to update its other watches as well too. So yeah, for me, 
really happy with my time with the Car Space 3, a really, really good multi-sports, you know, running watch um, to use. And I said, I think the best Chorus watch uh, that you can buy right now. And yeah, I, or I can only really have really positive things to say about the Pace 3. Um, minor kind of issues, but I wouldn't really, you know, issues would be a strong word to put here. I think this is a very kind of competent kind of solid watch to use for your runs and it's available at a good price even though it's jumped up a little bit in price so there you have it that has been our review of the new coros pace 3 i hope you found it useful if you did we'd really appreciate it if you could hit like maybe share it if you know someone who's looking for a new running watch considering what they should buy maybe even subscribe if you're not already otherwise it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you again we hope to see you again soon on the run testers Happy running everyone and good luck hitting those autumn goals whether you're just out there to enjoy yourself or you're going for a race time, go and get it.